Hello, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk all about hot finishes. What is that? Well, you know, pressing is a pretty big part of embroidery, sewing, and quilting. And we've always been told that we should press as we sew, but we should also press at the end. And I thought I would show you some of my favorite tools that, and how I set up my ironing area at home. But before we get started, we're going to definitely, definitely look at your small town charms. We found some adorable dress shops that you have made. So thank you so much for well downloading the design and making the adorable project and then sharing it because I love finding them. So make sure you sign in so we can see where you are today. Hi, Sharon Schroeder. You're traveling to Texas today. Well, welcome, right, to Texas. And hello, Isabel from France. Oh my goodness, people from all over. It's just so wonderful. I know the OML gang is here. I see some of your names, Retha Ranke and Chris Yost and Pat Page and uh, Alicia Gentry. It's really lovely to have you all here. So shall we take a look at your small town charms, the ones that you have done? And if you're new here, we do have a newbie who just uh, signed in. Uh, I can't find her right now, but she says uh, she's new to this broadcast. So maybe you don't know, but we do a free giveaway once a month, a free design that you can download from our website and you stitch it out. And once you have it stitched out, take a photograph of it and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Dime Sew Along. So here is our January version. This was a quilt shop. And Small Town Charm is a nod to small business all throughout uh, America and I guess Europe, Europe and other areas of our globe. So you can download a seven by 12 or a five by seven because we most certainly want everyone to join in this fun. Here was uh, February, that's our sweet shop. Who doesn't like to go from the quilt shop to the sweet shop, right? And then next up is So Chic, which is a, la a ladies dress shop. It has some handbags in it. And uh, I know that many of you have just had a blast with this. So let's see what you've done. Luann Mackinder Green Greenberg did, uh, it's just stunning. Her color choices are exquisite, really, really lovely. Her dress, her bags, they all pop, they all separate from each other. And she named her, her, her store Mode of Day. Um, so I, I guess there's uh, a lot of me memory to her of that door. I mean, of that small town charm. I think where she grew up as, in, as in junior high and high school, that was her shop that she liked to shop at. So let's see, then Chris Yost, she has the Diamond Peak Dress Shop, which is adorable. And she added some interesting things. She's got a shoe under the table of handbags. She put bows on the door. She's got a, a little flourish of vine and a star on top of the window. And then she's got a kitty cat on the sidewalk, just waiting for its owner, I guess. Isn't that adorable? But she didn't stop there. She's got a second story. So when you lift the awning on her small town charm, she has added some really fun fabrics up there and uh, all kinds of little interesting doodads in that print fabric. That's a really well done. Jackie Burke, she went with a whole lilac um, and purples and green uh, color palette. It looks lovely. Now she decided to kind of have an ode to St. Patrick's Day. She she made her dress a evening gown. She lengthened the skirt and she's got an emerald neckline, an emerald necklace um, dangling from the dress form. Really very well done, Jackie. That's beautiful. And here's a close up of that emerald necklace. Who doesn't want an emerald, ne an emerald necklace, right? Okay, then Patricia O'Neill Page, she named her shop Posh. Love that name. She did a great job. I really like that. And again, her uh, the colors that she chose for her bags really complement one another. They look just lovely. And she also did, uh, I would say, a nod to St. Patrick's Day with that green pretty dress. Uh, very well done, Patricia. Just adorable. Donna Brayton. 
she went with a variegated thread on her dress. So she's got that wonderful kind of tone on tone, um, reddish and orange thread that decorates her dress. Just very, very lovely. Robin Matson Rhodes. Now I had to include this because she's catching up. I read where she said she's catching up with the earlier small town charms. And so this is her, this is February sweet dreams. And she, I like, check out her awning fabric. She's a great job with that, right? That fabric, it looks like tile almost very well done. And Retha Ranke, you say, you're always amazed at the talent and different embellishments and embroidery. I know everyone comes out different and that's what makes this whole project so much fun. People are experimenting in their software and most certainly digging into their fabric stash to find just the right print. And it, it's just interesting to see how everyone puts their own stamp on it. So Robin also has a, an attic on her sweet shop. And as you see, she pulls down the top to reveal a kind of a cork fabric behind. And then she's got um, a tabletop and some decorations on a bookcase, which just, it's adorable. Very well done, Robin. But also she has her dress shop completed and um, that is the diamonds dress shop. Lovely. She put a handbag, I think, on uh, on the ground there. Uh, well, on, on the floor, we shall say, inside the window. So let's see. Diana Mullins Atkins says, I've missed these. Can you explain the small town charms? Well, sure. So Diana, the last Thursday of the month, I provide a free design, actually two, one in a five by seven and one in a seven by 12 that is free to for anyone to download and create their own small town charm. And then I ask you in um, that if you would then post on social media, an image of your small town charm. And when you post it, tag it with hashtag dime so along. And then right before you know, well, like Wednesday or Thursday morning before the Thursday broadcast on Facebook Live, I search the social media to find your small town charms. And, and then I include them in this slideshow. So those are, they're all free to you. And you can see there's our website where you can, um, in the chat here, you can see, and let me bring that up so you can see it right here. This is where you go. So if you just go to dzgns.com and search for free designs, it will take you to it. So it is, um, it's an awful lot of fun. And last year we had a whole different project. We also did that every Thursday, but not only do I give that away on Thursday, the last Thursday of the month, we have good friends at OML Embroidery who host a sew along. And that's led by Sue S. Brown. And Sue um, generously shares her time and she you know, goes live while she makes it in real time. So that's a lot of fun. And she's got a, a lovely group of embroiderers over there that have an awful lot of fun. And they're always open to you know, more members piping in and joining. You can stitch along with her or you can watch. It's your choice. Okay, so where are we? And Robin didn't disappoint because in her dress shop, she has another attic. Now, some of these things that you are seeing, Diana, is, um, you know, I don't include those attics and I don't include, you know, some of the little minis that you see up there, like that sewing machine and that mirror or, uh, or the bookcase. You know, those are items that embroiderers add on their own. So, okay, that, that's that. All right, so today let's talk about our uh, uh, pressing. Let's go on over to the um, tabletop. So you can see I brought in this box so you could see that I have this um, right next to my ironing board on a small table. And this houses all of my pressing stuff. So I have starch, whoops, never pick it up by the cap, right? I have starch i like that uh well this one is actually sizing so i like that and then i have um regular starch and then i have a non-aerosol and i have best press i do have a seam roll and i always have a lint brush that needs to um <laughs> remove that and and expose the a new tacky surface right 
this is also the container that I use to um, fill my iron with distilled water because we'll get to that in a moment. And then I know many of you have probably seen these uh, really awesome spray bottles, right? They have a super fine mist. Now I don't sell these, but lots of shops do. And they're awesome. You just fill it with water. And if you want to wet a surface, it's a fine mist. It's really awesome. And then I have my totally tubular pressing station. So I have my wool mats and I have this already assembled, my two pieces, the six inch board and then the three inch board. And then this is the interchangeable part of the skinny one and a half. You'll also notice that in my little ironing bucket, I have Teflon um, sheets that I use to protect fabric when I'm applying fusibles. And you know, these come pretty big, but sometimes I cut them down into more manageable sizes because I often am just, you know, maybe adding some fusible to a ribbon or something. And so then I only need a little piece of this and it's easier to clean. And to clean, you know, you really just kind of run your thumb across that surface and see that fusible stuff just comes right off. So, um, but I'm sure you know that. <laughs> or you've, or you, maybe you're like me and you've ruined enough irons in your time. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out these uh, tools and I'm just going to set my iron here and it is on, it's hot. So um, let's hope I don't, I don't burn myself during a broadcast because I've been known to do that. It gets a little nerve wracking up here. Okay, so the totally tubular pressing station is a pretty cool thing. So I'm gonna turn it on its side. So you can see that it is wood and it has plastic plates and a post and they separate just by uh, slipping them aside. And here, I guess I could do it this way. I kind of need both, both thumbs and then I can switch out my boards. So why would I do this? Well, it depends on what I'm actually going to be pressing open. Sometimes I need a skinny thing to get on the side of a bag, or I need a larger surface to maybe do the front of a bag or a t-shirt, something like that. So they're interchangeable. They work really well together. And I'm just gonna um, go ahead and separate this one and start with the bigger one first. Okay. They're kind of, uh, they're very easy to switch in and out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is, I made this um, kind of a daub kit recently, and this is a pattern by Bodobo Bags. Um, I don't have a relationship with these people, but I just thought I would show you, I'd give, you a sh give them a shout out. Th the name of this bag is the Mini Diddy super cute, comes in all these different sizes. And this is, I think, the medium size. And it is lined, let's open it up. It's lined and inner lined with fusible fleece. And I brought that bolt so you could see what that's like. So it's fusible on one side. This side is rough and this side is smooth. So I apply this to the outer fabric and, but it's, you know, it's thin, right? Look how thin it is, you know, so. Um, it's not real thick. I just wanted to let you understand that. And so on this side of the bag, I'm going to show you maybe if we get the side cam. So you can see how here, like it's just all caving down and my points on the ends don't look so great. But when you look at this side that I have already pressed on the board, now you can see how nice finished that daub bag really is. So in order to finish the other side, I just dress this board in this fashion. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the bag corner is aligned with that sharp corner on the press board. And then I would go ahead and apply steam. And I might even now, I don't know what's gonna happen with our camera when we do this, but I would stand it up and actually apply steam this direction. That's what's gonna give me that nice firm crease. And then I've moved my bag to the other corner. And since I'm in this direction, I can go ahead and already 
start there and then I'll lay it flat and get that crease on this corner from this angle. And remember, you know, steam is your friend, but you know, your hands, you gotta be careful, right? And so now you can see what a difference that bag mates makes. Now all four sides are nice and defined and they really look professional. I would go and do the same thing with this edge and we can go ahead and do that while we're waiting. Uh, I mean, while you're watching. And so this time I'll just take that iron and press and actually maybe it's easier if I put the bag, set the bag on the inside and then I get a, a deeper crease, you know, because I can put the iron on this side. So I would just continue finishing that bag and there you have it. I mean, to me, that's a total upgrade on that little dot bag. It looks so much more professional now, right? Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, so now let's see. I have some other things to look at. Oh, like here's our little vintage clutch. These are so cute, right? We make these all in the hoop and that's our vintage thread. So this was a sample that oh, we did about a year ago. And you can see it, it's already glued into its uh, frame. But here's one that's in progress. And so this is a good example of when you uh, press as you sew, right? So I'm gonna start on the back side and I'll just dress that right that board. And again, I'm gonna pull the fabric down so that I'm getting a nice sharp corner there. And I will give it a nice crease. I can even turn it up, do that edge nice and sharp and do the same thing on this edge. You know, when we made these boards, it was, you know, kind of hard to decide what size would you make the width because we wanted to accommodate a lot of different fabrics. But then I learned, well, as long as you can get the bag over the board, then you most certainly can do it in two pressings, you know, one corner and then slide it and then do the other. So isn't that fun? Oh, I love this bag. Look how colorful. I can't wait to get this finished and use it. It's really going to be great for summertime. When that comes, I know some of you, your comments, you're like, oh, it's uh, where you are is snowy and cold and winter is still there. But I know many of us like to do, you know, the foam, right? The heavy foam, like by Annie, she often, well, she sells that foam interfacing in both a fusible and a non-fusible. But, you know, they don't have a lot of shape, but you can give them shape most certainly on these boards. So now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do the three inch side and I'm just aligning the edge of that corner with the sharp edge of the board and I'm gonna give it a nice strong press. And again, I would do that same thing on this side. And you know, I would also stand it up, make sure I can get a nice uh, corner press on the bottom of the bag and then move the fabric, the bag, so that I'm then uh, concentrating on the opposite corner. And this really does give definition to bags. This is how you get that nice professional finish so that it looks like it's, you know, maybe if you're a Bradley bag that you purchased. I mean, it's all in the finishing, all your hard work that you did in making that bag so look at the difference in the two sides. Here we have more definition here. This is still all, you know, poking out just kind of like in a circular pattern. And of course we could flip the board and then do that front really well. Like if you have some creases, if you fused it, this is how you would take that out with steam. Okay, so you get the picture, but you know, I would finish this side so that I would have an even bag. Okay, they're fun, right? Love those little baskets. They're great storage units for sure. But also how about pressing? So real pressing. So here I have a onesie that I'm gonna add some trim to the neckline. And just because I can embroider doesn't mean I have to embroider everything, right? 
So in this instance, I'm dressing that little onesie right over the board. Now I have this attractive, you know, kind of delicate trim and I have fused a uh, fusible web on the wrong side. I, and of course I did use our Fuse Me, our new fusible web that we're just loving. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit this with, and I really don't need steam. Oh, and see, that's exactly what you shouldn't do because look what happened. <laughs> well, we have a very interesting <laughs> design here. Very interesting design. Okay, so if you're using steam, right, that's what happens. So let's see if we can resurrect this. We'll just tuck that little flower underneath the overlap shoulder. And I'm gonna, I turned that steam off and now we'll give it a nice firm press. Now a little trick that maybe a lot of you don't know is um, fusibles will often, the glue will trap, once the heat is applied, the glue travels towards the heat. It's drawn to the heat. So to get a, extra secure, if you're not sure if your fusible works like that, turn the garment inside out and repress. Now this is a really good time to add the wool mat. I'm just gonna put that over there because now I don't wanna crush those pretty flowers. I mean, I kind of did, you know, when I was applying the, uh, the, the fusible web to it, but let's not keep doing that. So now when I press from the back, that glue is coming towards my iron, which is exactly what we want. We want it to adhere that trim to the base fabric, which is our um, adorable onesie. So that worked out pretty good. Now my ends are, I'm gonna trim them down. I would just t cut those off because I didn't, you know, I kind of just hid them underneath that shoulder overlap. So I would trim them before I gave that to the mommy. And could I add embroidery? Well, I do have, uh, I do have a stabilizer on the wrong side, so I could add, you know, mommy's little favorite or some adorable little saying, or pull off the stabilizer and just wrap it up and give it away. There's that. Okay, but here's a onesie that is done. This is a rocket for a little boy. This was actually a patch that was applied on. So again, I would turn this wrong side out. And here I have um, stabilizer applied really to kind of just soften the back and then to press that embroidery, press it from the back on this lovely wool mat and then it won't flatten out, which is a great way to finish embroidery. And I know that many of us, you know, are always looking for ways to finish embroidery so that we don't harm the stitches that we spent so much time applying. Here is, here I'm gonna show you two versions of this. So here's a shirt that's already complete. This is my simple to chic necklines. And uh, this is a regular crew shirt that I apply that beautiful embroidery to. And the last thing we do is add some uh, interfacing and you know the trick is in the collection, but then that opens this t-shirt and turns it into um, an eyelet lace design. So here I have one in progress. Sorry that it's gray, gray on gray on gray. It's not very appetizing, right? But you can see this is the right side and here's all the embroidery that's already been applied. And my goal now is to pull this to the wrong side so that we don't see it from the front. And that's what finishes the edge. So I'm gonna turn this inside out and inside out or right side in. And now I position that on top of this board. And gently I pull my interfacing to the wrong side of the garment. And here, I'll move up a little bit so you can get a good look. Okay, so now I'm going to take some time to, and I actually start at the V down here because this is the trickiest part. It, it is digitized that you, so that you can have enough of the interfacing to pull to the wrong side and get a nice clean finish. And I'm just 
kind of working it. You know, it takes a moment. You've already spent time embroidering on this garment. So don't rush the finish. You want the finish to be uh, the professional finish that gives you that great opening in the front without any interfacing showing. So I'm pulling this and working that fabric so that the interfacing is not going to show on the front. And take your time. Don't apply the heat until you're sure you have it the way you want it. And then on these little corners, uh, we just actually have too much here. And I don't think I have a pair of scissors near me. But anyway, you're all so kind. You'll let me go get a pair of scissors, won't you? They're just right over here, right out of arm's reach. Okay, here we go. We got them. So I would trim some of this off. That's a little too much. Just trim some of that off. And then we want to fold a little V at the top. That's how we're going to finish that top. And I actually tack that down with the interfacing just on the corner. And then, then I work that the rest. There we go. And then you'll see when I turn this, of course we get rid of that gray mat, gray on gray, not a very good choice, right? And then you can see no interfacing shows. So that's the way to finish that. And then when you are all finished, and then you can take your finished garment like this Carl one, and then I would turn that inside out again because you wanna give it a nice final press without uh, flattening the embroidery, although a lot of that is around stitches, but there are some pretty little satin um, flowers that you don't want to flatten. And when we stitch that, I mean, we when we press it on the wool mat, it's nice. It's really nice. It lets that embroidery stay up. And so, you know, when you make this garment, you know, don't worry about these little tucks in the interfacing. Nobody's going to see that. That's the inside of the garment. This isn't a home ec class where you have to get um, the, uh, you know, the inside looking as beautiful as the outside. I mean, shoot me. I would never be able to keep sewing if somebody was checking all that out. And actually, when I used to go and teach embroidery around the country with, um, with my stitching sister, people would say, um, you know, people would say, well, can I see the inside? And I'm like, well, sure. If you want to be disappointed, you can look on the inside of my garment, right? It's not that important to me. You know, it's the outside. It's the beautiful embroidery that you devoted all that time and fabric and thread and stabilizer to. So don't fuss on the inside. Let's see. And Tone, you say you can't find this embroidery. Can someone help, please? So let's run that, um, the link there. And actually, Tone, if you look in the comments, if you uh, scroll up in your comments, I believe our friends, one of our team members have actually posted that there. So you could copy and paste and put it in your browser. So next week, we are going to be talking about some vintage um, thread and uh, how we get this great look of embroidery, kind of an old school embroidery look with that matte finish, that 40 weight polyester. So let's see, uh, Stephanie Hardy, possible one of the t-shirt remakes next week. Um, not really, we're just really gonna be talking about the threads. The following week, we are gonna talk all about the t-shirt remakes. I have a new sample in the works that, um, you know, to share. So they're fine. Gosh, I love wearing them. Have any of you been wearing them or making them? I love that. Yeah. It's, uh, they're super fun. So I thank you for joining us. I want you to know some of you are waiting for your orders. Well, this week, I'm happy to tell you hoop guards are here. And uh, so is print and stick target paper. And we have shipped out, are you ready? Over 700 hoop guards. So if you're one of those waiting on your doorstep for your hoop guard, it's on its way to you. But I can't control UPS and I can't control FedEx. I know things are taking a long time. So uh, Karen McLaughlin, you love my earrings. Well, me too. So my earrings are from my lace jewelry collection, 
but I didn't make them. These were made uh, for me by Annette Yeager, who is our, uh, she works here in our accounting department and she's a new embroiderer. She just treated herself to a baby lock and she's been stitching, stitching, stitching. In fact, I didn't say it last week, but she made the earrings for me that I wore last week. So I'm so happy for her. And you know, if you're a new embroiderer, gee, lace embroidery is a good thing to start with because you know you don't have to worry about placement. You don't have to worry about fit. It just looks beautiful. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Next week is going to be a fun week. It's busy here, lots of events. And also I'll be teaching out at Sewing Machine Plus Virtual Quilt Fest every day two times a day. So you're welcome to jump over to their website and learn all about that. So thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next week.